We have a casualty today. We have a poorly sick 1.6 caddy TDI and it has blown the injector straight out the cylinder head. The bolt has snapped. It's blown its oil absolutely everywhere. It's made a mess and at the moment it's scrap. It needs some doctor tech engineering. It is a common problem. Sometimes the injector bolts snap. I need to get all the injectors out, get the rocker cover off, not get too messy, because it's a Saturday. But we love a caddy, and we're going to get involved no matter what day it is. Let's get into it. What an absolute mess it is under here, literally. We have got oil everywhere, all over the DPF, the bulkhead, the brake pot, over the bonnet. It's made a mess. I will have to address that after we've fixed it, if we can fix it. Um, I'm sure we can, it's no bother. But I do need to get all four injectors out, all four fuel lines off, get the wiring out the way, rocker cover off. I can't remember if I have to take the timing belt cover off, but we're gonna find out. It is a bit of a guide on how to do it, of course. Otherwise, why do I even make videos? I want to give you guys tips and tricks to make your life at home easier. I'm just going to time lapse stripping it down. What you, if you're a DIYer at home, you've got your 17 mil spanners, 10 mil sockets, etc. But on the VWs, they do have some extra bits. We have got an M8 multi spline, not a Torx multi spline, and that holds the injector down. We've got T30 bolts on the rocker cover and everything else you should have in your own toolkit. We need to get the plastic intake pipe off. You just squeeze two sides, pop him out the way. And just quickly, why does the injector bolt snap on this VW Audi Seat Skoda engine? Well, on different diesel engines, they have two bolts that hold each injector down. Or some engines have one bolt. The 19PD has one bolt to hold each injector down. Well, VW, Audi, Seat Skoda, the VAG group, they thought they would design an engine with one bolt to hold two injectors down. And it's an M6. It's not an M8 or an M10. It is a skinny bolt. And I do joke around in previous videos, everyone says you've got to replace this bolt, replace that bolt. Well, I just stick them back in. With these, you do not want to replace these. This bolt is probably a fiver, six quid max. Now because they was reused or even never been apart, even though this one has had more injectors than triggers broom handle, they've probably been reused. So for the sake of five, six quid a bolt, there's only two, you won't be then paying out or wasting hours of your life, stripping all this down, and hopefully get in a snapped bolt out the cylinder head just to replace them. Anyway, gonna roll a time lapse, get all this stuff out the way. I have got a clean environment, a dusty cardboard box lid over there, and I'm gonna lay it all out nicely. I'm gonna lay the injectors out, one, two, three, four, and then I'm gonna lay all the fuel lines out, one, two, three, four. That way on reassembly, they can all go back in their original holes and not mix them up and not have to recode the injectors. Roll the time lapse. Oh yeah. got it all stripped out. I did manage to get the rocker cover out just by lightly caressing the timing belt cover over. 
one of the bolts to the rocker cover is close to the intake pipe, but you can just nick it out around the side. Fuel rail out the way. We've got all the wiring flopped over to one side. Just one thing I want to point out before any of you keyboard warriors notice. We have got oily tools all along the scuttle panel. It is not good practice to be making a mess on someone's scuttle panel, but it's already soaked to oil and I will clean it after. Usually I'd have all my tools next to me, but as it's there and covered in oil, we're adding to it, but we'll clean it after. I've got the rock cover off and I can see the snap bolt. I will get you guys in closer in a minute. Now, how do I go about getting this out? Well, I can't grab it. It is rocking backwards and forwards. There's not enough there to grab with a pair of pliers. You could try putting a nut over it and welding it. I like to use a left-handed drill bit. Now, don't be in a rush and think, I'm gonna use a normal drill bit and tap and dye it. I don't care whether you're the Queen, David Attenborough, or the Pope. If you use a normal drill bit and a handheld drill, you're gonna drill down there at a wonky angle. And if you do that and make a mess, your cylinder head's knackered, you're gonna to have to replace that and it is gonna be not cost effective. So order a left-hand drill bit, go find a left-hand drill bit from anywhere, dig one up, I don't know, machine mark. Just make sure you get a left-handed drill bit because a lot of the times when the bolts have snapped like this, yes, they're snapped and you can't grab them, but the threads are not tight, they're not cross-threaded, so as soon as the left-handed drill bit starts to cut into the bolt, it wangs it out. Let me get you guys sat in a bit closer and get my tools ready. I have got you guys in super zoomed in mode. Hopefully you can see it's this bolt and it does move a little, so I don't think it's in there too tight. As I say, there's not enough meat on the bone to grab it. I have got a left-handed drill bit and it's about a four mil, five mil. Take your time, I've got cloths all around my area. Now, it would be good practice to get in there with a belt sander and just carefully clean the top of it. Because if it's not a flat surface, it's so hard to drill. See, the bolt's moving a lot. I have, I'm confident it's gonna come out. Yes, did you see it move then? It's already moved, there it's gripping. Slow and steady wins the race. Well, it's undone a bit. Can I grab hold of it now? Yes. Now, I did get lucky. If your bolt is further in the hole or it's a bit more mashed up, it might not come out so easy. I got extremely lucky then. The left-handed bit gripped hold of it and spun it out. We have success. I have been out and picked up some new seals. Went to TPS, which is Trade Part Specialist. They do genuine VW Audi stuff. And when ordering these, there is two different types. So I gave them the rocker cover number, the part number, which is right here next to the oil filler cap. Now, they only had two in stock. If you're a smart man, you'd replace all of these. You can get kits on eBay. Maybe they're good, maybe they're not. I believe I've used them in the past. We needed these today, so I've been and got them. Hour round trip. I've already popped one out. I've got a flathead. The first one come out quite easy. I was surprised. Second one has come out. A little wipe. It's clean in there because I've just took the old one out. A little squirt of the good stuff, WD-40. Is it just gonna pop in by hand? Yes, lovely. I had a 27 mil socket ready to hammer that in. Popped in nicely. I'm not replacing anything else, no rocker gaskets, 
No other ones. The other ones haven't got splits in. Obviously, it'd be nice to do them all while you're here. But it's Saturday afternoon. I could only get two. Two is all it's getting. Now, let's have a look at the van. On cylinder one, the copper washer injector seal was actually stuck inside uh, the injector bore. But I normally use a piece of welding wire with a tiny little hook bent on the end. And I'll sit there, fish it out. Managed to get it out. The rest of them have come out. Now with the injector holes, there's normally dirt and debris inside there. So I just blew it out with an airline. You might need to scrape it with a flathead or something. Don't be too brutal because it's only alley, but just clean it where the injectors are then going to seat. Blew it all out. It's nice and clean. I'm happy with how it's looking so far. Now it was a little bit of a wiggle to get the rocker cover out because I didn't take the timing belt cover off but it weren't too bad to get back together. Now I'll just pop the uh, time belt cover back over. We're on the T, T30s. Let me do these up and we'll stick the injectors in and talk about copper washing. So back under the bonnet, move the torch right out the way. Now, again, if you're a smart man, you're gonna replace all of these copper washers on all four injectors, but TPS I've just been to only had two. Now the first two looked like they had been chuffing because if I show you a used and a new injector copper washer you can see it has been smashed to pieces but the last two are still in good shape and they look like these first two. Now I'm in a pickle and we need it back together today so I have just replaced the first two. If you are in a pickle such as myself you can't just replace one. You're better off having the injectors sat on two fresh injector seals or injector washers because one bolt holds them down. You don't want one higher and one lower. So two fresh ones will make sure they're absolutely parallel. Now, I have already pushed the metal clips in for the fuel return. I've pushed the metal clips all the way in. Uh, and when you go to put the fuel return pipes on, they are shaped that you can have the clip in and pop it in, but when removing them, you do have to pull the clip out. If you have experienced your fuel leak off pipes, the little return pipes popping out, then these little metal clips, they bend open slightly. So you can get them with a pair of pliers with the clip all the way out the injector and just squish them a little bit closed, a little bit tighter, and that will stop your injector fuel leak off pipes from popping out. I have also heard of the injector bolt clamp snapping. I've seen pictures. I haven't seen one myself, but I have seen it happen. You could be even more proper and replace them too. But come on, if you're replacing all that, you might as well get a new van. Um, you do have to put both injectors in at once. Can get a bit fiddly. I'm going to put these in, but I'm not going to bolt them down solid. When you go to put the fuel lines on, these might be slightly twisted one way or the other. So at the moment, we can still move them. Um, let me get the other two injectors in, remembering to put them back in the same hole they came out of. Now, it's up to you. You can skip this part, but I'd just like to give them the slightest tap down. Might be proper, might not. But now I know the injectors are all the way home before I've even stuck the bolt in. I got two new bolts. I got these from Euro Car Parts one M6 bolt to hold two injectors. They were a fiver for two of them. I've not had an issue with the Euro car parts bolts breaking or anything like that. I am just going to slightly snug these down by hand for the moment. And now I'm going to reassemble in the same order or as much as I can remember, putting it back together. We are 
are almost back together. Now, if your injectors have popped out, your fuel lines might be slightly bent, so you may need to massage them back into shape. I managed to do it with brute force and my hands, but they weren't too bad out of shape. If you go to all this trouble and it doesn't fire up the van, just check all these unions are tight, i.e. the fuel lines, because I have also seen that before too. I went to help a buddy out, he'd done his own injector, it wouldn't fire up, so I just checked all the unions and he'd left one loose. Tightened it up, bosh, fired straight up. And the reason for that is the fuel rail pressure sensor wasn't, wasn't, wasn't seeing the correct numbers, so it didn't let it fire up. Safety, because there is a few PS of eyes in this fuel rail. You wouldn't want that shooting you in the retina. These don't need to be hanging tight. I'm not hanging off them. I'm just putting enough force in. And when reassembling, I haven't bolted any of these uh, water lines, fuel lines down because they do go in a certain order. You might pop the glow plug wires on, then realize this line needs to go under it. So I haven't put any screws back in yet. Now all the fuel lines are on. We're happy that they're going to live there. They're going to sit there. I am going to use a torque wrench in this instance. I do normally just use a 3 8 ratchet and do, the, uh, and do it up, but I've been doing mechanics for 20 years, so I can feel when a bolt is stretching, I can feel when they're tight, because if you're just expecting the bolt to lock up and be tight, you're wrong. It's a thin stretch bolt, so if it doesn't go tight, that, it means it is tight, and now you're stretching the bolt, you're just about to snap it and start all over again. Let me get a torque wrench. This is a posh torque wrench. It is a snap on digital Dubry Firkin. Normal torque wrenches, I don't know if they go low enough. I believe they do. Again, I've done many of these injectors with just mechanics fill. But for the sake of the video, we're going proper. Seven Newton meters and 180 degrees, I've just read. Well, that's 7.4. She's going to snap. Such a light torque. 6.9. She's going to pop out and be loose. Right. Now, we need to do degrees. You can just do it by eye. 180. <whistles> half a circle. Foot pounds. Foot inch. Degrees. 180. This isn't mine, by the way. It's a bit posh for me. I've had to borrow it. 180 degrees. Yes. If it snaps on camera, we will laugh together. 180 degrees. And honestly, it really doesn't feel that tight. And that's because it's an M6 bolt stretching. One eighty on the nose. Happy day. And that actually said fifteen point six newton meters. That flashed up and told me then. So we're all tight. But a boom. But a bing. I do need to uh, still put all the bolts back in these water lines, etc. I've got my injectors back in the same hole. We know it's all good. But before I go too mad and fully assemble, we are gonna test it. But I do know there is a line here somewhere that needs to go on. And that is the vacuum to the rocker cover. Now no hidden agenda, no altered content as YouTube might say. We are going to roll straight with it. Hopefully there's enough juice in the battery because the battery was flat. 
And I believe that is because he has got an Android aftermarket stereo without the correct wires. He should have gone to K-Tech modules to buy one of their built-in, built-in CAN bus stereos. I have one in mind, don't you know? I am just looking at what I've done. It's so easy to forget a step. If you're a DIYer, just take a little bit of time looking at what we've done or looking at what you've done. All my return lines are in. I remember tightening all up, all the injector lines up. You guys saw it. Um, I do need to clip some hoses in here, there and everywhere, but let's see if it runs. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna prime the ignition three or four times, maybe five times, maybe six times. And that is gonna get fuel pumping where we need it. That is enough in my house. Oh yeah. We're happy with that. Let's pull you guys away. Reset the camera. About there. They are quite a noisy engine without the cover on. I can't see any leaks. It's running all right, it's running on all four, but it is, they are noisy. Is what it is. It run, it didn't run when it got here. It runs now. Let me turn this off, because it sounds terrible. I say they sound terrible and it does, they're a bit clattery. But it was running on all four injectors. We are happy with that. Again, there's a few steps. If you've seen me see a job, see me see a sir, whatever. If you see me do a job today, i.e. drilling that injector bolt out and yours don't look like that and you've got hammers, chisels, jackhammers, I'm sorry, there's no hidden I've tried to be as open as I can. Everything's come undone. I got lucky and drilled the bolt out. Um, so it's not one of them YouTube videos where they say simply remove bolt. You look at your bolt and it looks like it's just been dragged up from the Titanic. You're never gonna undo it. Everything I've done has been first time. I've been lucky. Lucky or good? I'll let you decide. Um, yeah, happy days. Always re uh, replace them bolts. It is even good practice. Let's say your 1.6 TDI runs mint. You've never had an in uh, injector trouble. I personally, if I bought this van and I had unknown history, I'd order two new bolts and without taking anything else apart, I would take the injector bolts out and just stick new ones in because the force of the injectors trying to be splatted out or trying to be shot out by the compression of the engine, that weakens the bolt, stretches the bolt, snaps the bolt. So it's good practice to just go and change them bolts. It costs a tenner. No, it costs a fiver for two from Euro Car Parts. Anyway, I am going to clip all this back together. We're going to put our bolts back in the lines and then I'm gonna clean it because look at the state of it. D-T-E, fix me please. Ah uh, yeah, well that is a lot happier. I've let it run up, I've cleaned it. And just so you know, I am an engine emma, proper English. I am an engine pressure washing kind of guy, but I do then blow it out with an airline. It's come up nice, come up clean, clean the underneath of the bonnet, it's running well. It seems to be running good. It's done 200,000 miles. It might still keep going, I don't know. It's not a guaranteed forever fix because it is a bit tired, it is a bit rattly. It's probably the tappets. 
Now, if you come across this and someone's already been there before and butchered the hole, I do have another video on a Golf Mark VI with the same engine. Someone had uh, mashed the bolt hole where the injector goes. I drilled it out and put a stud in it. That vehicle is still running now, 30, 35,000 miles later, about four years ago, three years ago. Anyway, all done. This one's good. This one's wrapped up and he shall be back on the road Monday morning. Take what you want from my videos. If there's stuff you don't like, just kidding. But look, there is methods and means for every job. Some people might like some things. Some people might not like what they see. So it is what it is. I'll see you guys in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. I would like to elaborate on this video because although I have got the injector bolt out, cleaned it, and got it running, this vehicle or this caddy is still a bit poorly. It smokes, you try driving it up the road, it's clanging, it's tapping, it's banging about. Something's not happy. It might be one injector still out. It might be all four injectors still out. And I do believe the video you've just watched stands because I've shown you how to get a snapped injector bolt out. I've shown you how to fix it. Although this one does still need some more love, I believe you can take what you need from the first part of this video. But I don't like to hide any content. There is no altered content. So if I tell you how to do something, I'm not gonna say, yeah, this fixed it. No, that doesn't fix it. So if I hadn't have added this bit of the video on, you guys are gonna think this van's all sweet, up and running, but no. Honesty is the best policy. This van is tired. The owner has actually given up on it. I said it may need one injector. It may need four injectors. It may need a pump. It's not very happy. He said, well, I'm going to buy a new van. I want a transporter. So you're going to see a video this Friday, which will be after this video, on his new van. And it is an 11 plate. This caddy is. It's an 11 plate. It's really clean. Obviously, it's not that clean but the body is clean the seals are clean she's the facelift it's an aircon model so it's a good tidy van for a build series so i have done a deal and you may see it again or in fact you will see this van again now i'm out i'll see you in the next one